Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of my videos. If you're new here, welcome in general. My name is Fraylise. Today I have another recommendation for you guys and I brought back curly hair fray for this shit. I have not had the time to curl my hair before a video in like months, but you know, I was feeling it this morning. I woke up and I was just like, we're gonna curl my hair. Okay, today's video is gonna be a recommendation video for the good girl bad boy trope. This is like one of those OGs that you cannot not read, you know? I feel like every reader's beginner days was with this trope, with a like high school school bully romance with the good girl bad boy vibe you know it just gives and so today we're gonna be going through some of my favorites from that I will say that I filmed this video like three times and it just hasn't felt natural yet because the majority of these if not all of them are actually contemporary romances and that is not really me I read about five ten contemporaries per month and at my core I am a dark romance girly so this one is a bit hard I'm not in the way that like I didn't like these books because I fucking loved them they're just not dark romance. I don't know why, but it's a bit hard to find good girl, bad boy in dark romance. Some of these are a bit darker. I'll let you know which ones, of course, but we're gonna go ahead and get into today's video. This is for my contemporary subscribers out there. I've been trying to cater to y'all too, so thank you so much for watching though. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get into it. I also have a bit more recs than normal for this one. I think this is about eight recommendations, where I normally do like six, so this is gonna be a good video. The first one I'm gonna be recommending is The Words by Ashley Jade. This one is a rock star romance, second chance, forced proximity, good girl, bad boy. It gives the vibes. If you've been around on my channel for a bit, y'all know that I love me some rock star romance. I try to at least read one per month. This one was my February rock star romance read. It has a bit of darker elements to it, but it's still set in a contemporary world. Like it ain't a mafia world. So I would classify this one as contemporary romance, but this one follows Phoenix and Lennon. It's in dual point of view and it is also dual timeline because they meet when they are younger. Phoenix is the typical high school bad boy and he needs help with his grades which is where Lennon comes in she is the typical good girl she gets good grades she helps her dad out she doesn't have too much of a life <laughs> sorry girl but she gets asked to help tutor Phoenix and they kind of have a thing from there there's like a lot of tension they definitely like each other but Phoenix really needs to get out of their town like he doesn't want to live there he wants to go and explore the world so just as they are kind of developing something he leaves and four years later I think it's about four years later he's made it big he's doing a shit and she gets asked to become his like sober companion because his life is going off the rails and he needs somebody that will have no issue saying no to him and she doesn't and the tension is totally there in the second part too and it is so good for his proximity in the second part she is pissed at him he wants her back but his life is kind of off the rails so he doesn't really know what to do but obviously they fall back in love I love me a good second chance romance and this one gave that so I really recommend for this trope and many others the words by Ashley Jade. Next up is the only recommendation that I have in physical form and that is Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. This one is definitely an emotional read. If you're not ready for emotional wreckage and trauma, don't read this. It's set in a contemporary world but it goes through a lot of these characters past and trauma and there is a huge trigger for suicide in this one and just generally a lot of mental health representation and discussion in here. I absolutely loved it. It was definitely a character driven book and it is a bit thick so if you're not looking for that, this might not be the one for you. But this follows three people, actually, in the beginning. It follows Tate, Kellen, and Charlotte. Tate and Kellen are brothers, but Charlotte and Kellen meet first when they are both on a rooftop, prepared to jump off and end their lives. They make a pact to come back every year on Valentine's Day, I think it was, to make sure they both stay alive. And Charlotte keeps that promise, but Kellen does not. And he dies a few years after that, I think. And then she goes to Kellen's brother, Tate, who she kind of hates, because Kellen told her a bunch of things and so she's like oh my god he's an asshole and I mean he kind of is but she goes to see him and they kind of relive Kellen's life together because they're both grieving and they both kind of find a connection in each other and it's very slow burn there's a lot of tension in this one but like I said it's a very character driven book it is super good it's a bit slow and it is a thick one I think it's about 600 pages but I really liked it Tate doesn't necessarily give bad boy in the sense of like I carry guns and I'm an ex-con he gives bad boy in the sense of like I'm grumpy and I have a lot of trauma. I don't know. It's a very contemporary book, but it is a bit darker with the mentions of suicide and mental health. So Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. Not the most good girl bad boy on this list, but still fits this trope. Next one is a nice, quick, fast-paced read with some spooky season vibes. That is Hook by Emily McIntyre. This one I read actually during spooky season. I finished it in one sitting. It's a very fast-paced book. I'm gonna say it a lot, but it is just really fast-paced. It doesn't go too deep into the trauma or like the lives of the characters. 
chapters. I think it's about 350 pages, but it reads pretty quickly. So this is kind of a Peter Pan retelling-ish. It follows Hook and Wendy, and so Hook is obviously the hero. He is pissed at Wendy's father, Peter, who I think is Peter Pan, and decides to capture Wendy for like his revenge on Peter. So it is dual point of view. He captures her, kidnaps her, and they actually kind of start to fall in love because Wendy has been very sheltered her whole life. She's kind of naive, but she's finally experiencing something and she's like, oh my god. From my memory, she kind of falls quickly for him, but there is some shit that goes down with her dad because the dad is not the person he, she thinks he is, and Hook is like intent to tell her that. It is also a bit of a spicy book. You have some breath play in this one. It came out of left field for me. I was just like, what? How'd we get here? I wasn't mad about it though. I actually really liked it. So if you're looking for an easier, fast-paced read with a sheltered and good girl heroine and a kind of morally gray mafia vibe kind of hero, Hook, or actually I'm rethinking this, is it Hooked or is it Hook? One of those by Emily McIntyre. I would recommend that for you. Okay, next we're gonna go to the one that is a bit darker on this list. It is a dark romance actually. Yeah, it is. It's just like not the darkest I've ever read. This one is Bullseye by Monica James. I will let you know right now that this one isn't quite good girl bad boy the hero is definitely a bad boy he is like the definition of bad boy to me but the heroine is not definition of good girl she definitely is a good girl like like she's not quite sheltered and naive but she doesn't have too much of a life she doesn't like kill people or shoot people so she's not quite a good girl she's not quite a bad girl so she just kind of fits in the middle this is where bad boy comes in okay the hero is like the definition of bad boy so this one follows bull and tiger lily bull is an ex-con and at the beginning of the book we see him just coming out of prison setting up his life and he goes to work at a strip club where he meets Tiger Lily. Everyone calls her Lily, but he calls her Tiger. You know, it's those pet names, y'all, that really get the butterflies going. And they kind of have a thing at first. They don't like each other, but they don't hate each other. But it's not like enemies to lovers. They just don't get good vibes from each other. And so there's some tension there because they don't like each other. And I love that in my books. Like, if they don't like each other, I'm so invested in it. But obviously, they have to spend time together. But she is also a single mom, so she's got some shit on the side to deal with. She has a lot of past as well very protective of her too. I wouldn't quite say it's touch her and you die, but it's almost like that because he's a bouncer at the strip club. She's a dancer, so whenever someone gets handsy, you know he's right there to crush their fingers, if you know what I mean. So yeah, this one is a duet, and I will let you know that I didn't love the second book as much as I love the first one, but trust me, the first book makes up for it. It gave butterflies, it gave tingles. I loved it so much, and Bull definitely fits the bad boy trope. Next is actually going to be three books. I'm not going to talk about each one in detail because it is part of the same series. The whole series kind of has this trope for it, but we're going to highlight the three in particular. So I'm talking about the Fallen Men series by Gianna Darling. We're going to be talking about book one, which is Lessons in Corruption. This one is a student-teacher relationship. It's reverse age gap. I think there's like eight years, six years between them. And if you haven't heard of this series before, then I will tell you right now that this one is motorcycle as well. It's more of a contemporary darker romance because it's not like dark romance MC style, but it is a bit dark. Darker. So I think this would actually be a great starting point if you are looking to get into MC, especially because this one is a more popular series and a lot of people love it, as did I. But yeah, we're going to be talking about book one, Lessons in Corruption. This follows Cress and King. Full point of view, Cress is running from her ex-husband who is not a good guy and she's new in town and she sees King with his friends and she's like, damn, he's hot. And they immediately have this chemistry, but then she figures out that, holy shit, he's her student. And, and King definitely gives the vibes of like bad boy biker with a dangerous kind of vibe but he also like reads books keeps his grades up and she's just like I can't resist this dude and Cress kind of grew up in a sheltered life like she hasn't lived life to the fullest so she's really attracted to the way that he lives life and the way he just enjoys life to the fullest and while this wasn't my favorite of the series it definitely fits this trope number one it is also just a great setup for the rest of the story the only reason I didn't like this is just because I didn't like the characters but I did enjoy the next one a bit more that one is Welcome to the Dark Side. This is book two. This one is a big ass age gap taboo kind of book. It follows Lou and Zeus. Zeus is King's dad and Lou is actually just a bit younger than King. So this is a very big age gap. I think it's 18 years. I might be wrong but it is dual timeline because they met when Lou was younger and she was in the hospital with cancer and she almost got shot by a rival biker gang. Zeus saved her and he took a bullet for her. They were in the hospital together because I believe at that same time 
she also had cancer, which we see a lot more of throughout the book. And so I love the emotional aspect that that part added. But yeah, they then have a relationship a little bit later on. And there's definitely a good girl, bad boy in this one because Lou's dad is, is the mayor of the town and the mayor fucking hates the MC club because he thinks they bring down their image and shit. So it's forbidden as well. It's definitely taboo. He got in a big ass age gap in there that a lot of people may not be comfortable with. It was pushing my boundaries, but I still really enjoyed this one. But my favorite is book six, which is Dead Man Walking. Y'all, this one is my favorite. It's one of my favorite MC books like of all time. I wouldn't quite recommend this one as a standalone. I wouldn't quite recommend any of these three books as a standalone, but I'm sure you could if you wanted to. I just always read shit in a series. Even if I have to get through like the first three books to get to the one I want to read the most. But yeah, I'm sure you could read it as a standalone. I just wouldn't really recommend it. This one follows Bia and Priest. Bia is the sister of Lou, so she's also the daughter of the mayor who hates the MC club, and she is a total sunshine. She loves murder mystery podcasts. She has one, actually. She is very much a good girl, but she has always been drawn a bit to the darker side. Priest is the fixer for the MC club, so he fixes their issues, if you know what I mean. He basically kills their enemies, <laughs> and they kind of have a tension in the few books leading up to this one, and so they kind of do get together a bit quick, which is another reason why I recommend reading this as a whole series, because the whole series is so fucking good, y'all, trust me. But in this book, you really see them together because Bia is very much a good girl. Priest is not. Priest struggles with not wanting to hurt her or ruin her life or bring some kind of danger towards her, and it is so sweet. I love this one so much. Like I said, my favorite in the series. If you like Grumpy Sunshine or Psychopath Hero or Good Girl Bad Boy, you will love this one. Okay, next one. I had to recommend this one. I'm sorry. I'm sure you've seen this in so many recommendation videos, but I had to do it. This is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. I feel like this is such an OG book with an OG trope, so I don't know if I could have made this video without recommending Punk 57. This one is a friends to lovers pen pal relationship, so they've never met before, but they got paired up as pen pals in like grade five, and so they've been writing to each other ever since, and all of a sudden, the hero Misha breaks off all communication, and the heroine Ryan is absolutely pissed, but all of a sudden, they're in the same town together, going to the same school, and they definitely have a hate to love relationship. I wouldn't quite say enemies, but it also has a touch of bully to it. I actually loved it. The tension is so good, but yeah, they slowly find out who the other one is. They realize that they are totally in love and have been this whole time. In typical Penelope Douglas style, there is a bit of mystery to this one too. I absolutely loved it. It is also connected to the Devil's Night series because Misha is Will's cousin from Nightfall, which is book four, or in the Devil's Night series. I lived for this book. I actually reread it in January and I loved it. It's not like a favorite read of the year, but I do think it is a solid book. And while I think it's super hyped up, I still think you should read it. It definitely fits the good girl, bad boy trope. Misha is a musician, not quite rock star romance because he's not like famous, but yeah, he gives those vibes. Ryan is a bully, but definitely a good girl. She has a different side to her though. And I always love that with my heroines. So I do recommend Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. Okay, everybody, those are all our contemporary as fuck recommendations for this video. I'm just kidding, actually. I'm looking back now and realizing that like four of these are darker romance. So I hope I appease my dark romance subscribers as well as my contemporary subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I keep forgetting to say this, but as always, my links are all in the description. You can find my Instagram, my Goodreads, and my business email. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video very soon.